Good evening. You're watching ITV News Central in the East Midlands. A grandmother from Nottingham says she had to resort to pulling out her own tooth as she was in agony during a five-month wait to see an NHS dentist. It took Jacqueline Shepherd two days to take it out in an ordeal she described as sheer hell after developing toothache. A warning that Rajiv Popat's report contains details some people may find distressing. Jacqueline Shepherd can now brush her teeth without the pain she was in when she had severe toothache. Jacqueline, who's on benefits and lives in St Anne's in Nottingham, spent months trying to see an NHS dentist, but the response was always the same. All of them are saying we're not taking on NHS patients, but we're taking on private and it'll cost you a hundred and something pound for a checkup and then your treatment. And I was very upset. I'm saying, well, how can you do that? Not take NHS on, but take private on. Eventually, Jacqueline took matters quite literally into her own hands. I just got clove oil and some, um, it's like Bongella, but it's not Bongella. It's for your gums. I put it on, it numbed it, and I got a tissue and just twisted it till I got it out. I can't even really describe the pain. I've given birth to two children. It was worse than that. It really was. Jacqueline is on medication, which she says loosens her teeth. Although the pain began to subside with the tooth she took out, the situation became unbearable with her other teeth. She couldn't believe it when an NHS dentist in Snenton agreed to treat her. Jacqueline, you managed to see a dentist eventually, but what would you have done with your five teeth that were hurting if you hadn't been able to see a dentist? I would have ended up having to pull them out myself. I, I, I did resign myself to that fact. Earlier today, we contacted four dental practices close to Jacqueline's home who are listed as offering NHS and private services. However, none of them are accepting new NHS patients. They said they haven't even got a waiting list and couldn't give us an estimate as to when they might start accepting patients. If needing to go private, they all quoted more than £100 for a tooth extraction, but an initial assessment would cost between an extra £50 to £80. According to NHS Midlands, they're taking initiatives to increase dental care sessions for people across the Midlands. They say latest data shows dental services are recovering post-pandemic, with more than 26 million patient treatments delivered in England last year, up 120% from the year before. What's the answer? What do you think needs to be done? We need an emergency dentist. If it's just one dentist that works emergency, that will help a lot of people out because when they're stuck in the same situation as me, I can see a lot of people are going to end up with really bad teeth. Rajiv Pobbert, ITV News, Nottingham. Well, if you are looking for NHS advice on finding a dentist, then do have a read of some helpful advice and additional links on our website. That's itv.com slash central. Now, households are braced for more financial pain tonight as energy bills go up from tomorrow. The government has cushioned the rise with a price cap, but a typical annual bill is still set to go up from £1,971 to £2,500. That's an increase of 27% and around double what it cost this time last year. A disabled woman from Nottingham has told ITV News Central she's already having to choose between heating and eating and says she's terrified for the future, as Peter Byrne reports. We worked out that it's cheaper to boil the kettle and fill the hot water bottle because the hot water bottle lasts longer than it is to use the microwave to heat the wheat bag because the wheat bag gets cold more quickly. I really shouldn't be sat working out that piece of information. Anne Vivian Smith is having to make choices no one should have to make. The smart meter is both her friend and enemy, tracking her energy use, but also setting alarm bells ringing. It's no longer heating and eating, it's now heating and eating and washing, and it's heating and eating and washing and washing your clothes. And only one of those can you have. 
Anne from Bilborough in Nottingham has a neurodegenerative condition. She relies on disability benefits and her husband's salary as a university administrator. Her energy bills, she tells me, have already tripled this year. She doesn't yet know what she'll be paying from tomorrow. We've managed to keep our heads above water. Our concern is that after tomorrow, we won't be waving but drowning. You have lots of people saying it may be this bad, it could go to this, and that's just terrifying. Financial worries are also taking their toll on Anne's health. Skipping meals has now left her with an eating disorder. A bit like um, checking how many calories there are in the food. You also check how much it's going to cost to buy and then how much it's going to cost to heat. And once all of that is calculated in, well, I can talk myself out of eating it. As energy bills soar, Anne doesn't know whether her benefits will keep pace with inflation. The government has so far been non-committal on that, despite finding money for tax cuts. I'm clearly not important. I am clearly um, collateral damage. It's, it's not relevant to me. It's obviously much more important to make sure that somebody who earns over £150,000 to have a tax break than it is for me to get up in the morning and be frightened about whether I'm going to receive my benefits anymore. This is the human cost of the cost of living crisis. And winter isn't upon us yet. Peter Bean, ITV News, Nottingham. Well, in a statement, the Department for Work and Pensions said almost £6 million disability cost of living payments worth around £900 million have been processed. And as ever, there are links to help and support services on our website. Other news now, and a total of 55 people have now been arrested or voluntarily interviewed by police with nine charged over recent disorder in Leicester. Officers were called out to eastern parts of the city earlier this month after large crowds of young men gathered for an unplanned protest. Police say it will take them a number of weeks to work through the volume of inquiries on the case. Railway passengers are being urged to travel only if absolutely necessary ahead of strike action tomorrow. There will be limited services on East Midlands Railway operating only between 7.30 in the morning and 6.30 in the evening. There will be no services on cross-country routes. It's the first of three days of strikes this month after members of three unions voted to walk out in an ongoing dispute over pay. To football and Paul Warren will be in the dugout for the first time as head coach of Derby County this weekend as the Rams take on Cambridge. Warren has left championship side Rotherham to manage Derby in League One, a division he's been promoted from three times. Warren says the league is tough and needs to be treated with respect. There are some very good footballing teams in League One. There are some very competitive teams in League One that get loads of bodies behind the ball. And that is, uh, hasn't been a problem really at home yet, I don't think. But going forward, I know, because if I was a manager of a lesser team coming here, I would think, well, I'm going to have to get bodies behind the ball. So we're going to have to find different ways to win football games. And Nottingham's Goose Fair has opened for the first time since the pandemic. After two years away, organisers say they're excited to host a special 10-day fair. Stall and fairground ride operators are hoping it gets just as busy as previous years. We're just hoping the 10 days is as busy as it, it should be. I mean, normally we operate for five days, so it is operating at a different sort of level, double the time. Obviously, with the 10 days, I mean, it's raining today. Hopefully, there's, you know, there's, there's more chance of getting bad weather, so hopefully the weather stays good over them days and we'll have a good goose fair. Well, let's see what the weather's like for them. Here's Amanda Houston. Hello and a very good evening to you. Hope you're all keeping well. So after that spell of wet and windy weather earlier on today, things are looking a little better as we go through this weekend. So still a few blustery showers around at times, but also some decent sunshine. Although there is a threat, might just see a little bit of rain on Sunday.
So let's take a look then at the bigger picture. We can see from earlier low pressure brought that weather system across the UK. It brought rain and very strong winds earlier on. You can see it is now clearing out of the way. And as we go through this weekend, the wind's not quite as intense out there. And for most of us, a good deal of dry weather. But you can see this little system down towards the south. There is the potential. This may move a little bit further northwards and might just bring a bit of rain into southern parts of our region. But for most of us at this stage, it is looking largely dry. Now, in the meantime, then, for the rest of tonight, a few blustery showers here and there, but for most of us, it is dry, lengthy, clear skies, and that breeze is going to help keep those temperatures above 10 degrees. Then tomorrow morning gets off to a fine start to the day, some decent sunshine, but it will be quite breezy out there, and then we'll see a few showers developing as we go through the afternoon. But they should move through quite quickly with that breeze, and actually in the sunshine tomorrow, not feeling too bad out there. Highs of 18 degrees. As I mentioned earlier, the chance of a little bit of rain in the south on Sunday, but for most of us, it's looking mostly dry. Well, that's all from us this Friday evening. From all the team here at Central, have a lovely weekend. Bye.